Hello, Stampers. I'm Kelly Atchison at Stampabove.com, coming to you from a beautiful and sunny Menasha, Wisconsin. Today, I'm going to be sharing some cards with you as uh, part of the Totally Techniques Design Team Blog Hop. We're featuring faux watercoloring today. Oh, so many different ways to use watercoloring other than with watercolor paints and a paintbrush. And I'm super excited because this is the first time you are going to see my million dollar stamp set in action. It's called Friendship Royalty and I hope you love it as much as I do. I've been having a blast with it and my um, whole purpose with this stamp set is to sprinkle a little happiness everywhere and I think we're going to accomplish that. Let's get started. I'll show you my cards and then you can hop along and visit all the other design teams blogs and see how they use faux watercoloring today. And here it is, you guys, friendship royalty. Now, when you reach a million dollars in career-to-date sales as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you get to design your own stamp set. This was so much fun. You guys that follow me know that I am a funky font lover. Of course, all of these fonts fit the bill for me. I love the swirl. I love the star with the little wand. And of course, the tears are one of my trademarks on my Facebook and YouTube lives. This stamp set is photopolymer, meaning that it is clear rubber. I love that for positioning. It makes it super easy. 12 different images in here. Let's get started with our very first friendship royalty card. Okay, I've got a lot of supplies out here. Um, I am going to be using some embossing. So we've got the basics embossing powders. This is a nice little pack because it comes with black, white, and clear embossing in, in one container. I'm also going to be using the Embossing Editions Toolkit because, well, why wouldn't you? It's fantastic. I've got the Baker's Twine Essential Pack, five different Baker's Twine, again, in one pack. Of course, we need some rhinestones, right? Um, Reinkers, our fluid 100 watercolor paper, as well as the water painters, a stamp and spritzer, wink of Stella, my basic tools here, and then I've got Memento black ink, Versamark ink, and the colors I'm going to be sharing with you. I'm going to do two different color combinations, but we're going to start off with Coastal Cabana, Bubble Bath, and Lemon Lolly. These two are brand new colors. Stampin' Up! just had a color refresh and we brought in this beautiful pink and also this really fun pale yellow. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a Stampin' Pierce mat. I like to use this as my surface that I stamp on. I've also got an embellishment container. I always save my empty embellishment containers because they're useful for a lot of different things. I've already cut my Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Both of these layers are three and three quarters by five. So we're gonna go ahead and do this technique right away. And we're going to start off with embossing so we can get these images ready to do the watercoloring technique. So I'm going to take my Stampin' Emboss Buddy and I like to wipe this over whatever kind of cardstock I'm using so that my embossing will only stick where I stamp with the Versamark ink. We're going to start with these fun little magical swirls. This always reminds me of when I was a kid, I used to sit on Sunday nights. I'd go over to my grandma's house and she would pop some popcorn in those, you know, those jiffy popcorn little pans that you went like this on the oven and it poofed up. And then we would drink Dr. Pepper. And um, back to why I think that goes with this. We would watch the Sunday night Disney movie and it always had that little Tinker Bell on the end that swirled her little wand and left these little like galaxy patterns. And so I, this just really is something that touches my heart. I love this pattern. We are going to emboss both of these pieces. And when you're using Versamark, it's a watermark ink. So it's kind of hard to see where you left off. So I'm going to try to leave a lot of space in between 
my images that I'm stamping here and we'll be able to see them in just a minute. You can also tip them up in the light and you can see them a little bit, which makes it a tiny bit easier. But I'm just going to go on blind faith that I am doing this right. So now let's bring in um, the embossing powders that I use the most, I pour into a larger container and this just makes it super easy for me to be able to dust these with the embossing powder. And now I can see where my little galaxy swirls are. I don't know that if there's a technical term for this or not, but I can clearly see that I don't have anything right here. So before I start doing anything, I'm just going to add one more little swirl right up there. Easy enough to do. There we go. I like to give it a good little flick on the back. We'll set this off to the side so we hopefully do not spill it and get out our heat tool. I always love the magic of embossing. It doesn't matter how many times you do this, when that heats up that powder and it turns all glossy, it's magical. And there we go, we've got this all embossed. I can see my little galaxy, my little wand sprinkles everywhere. Okay, now we're gonna work with this first um, layer. And watercolor paper is a fantastic thing, but one of the things about it that I really love is that it can handle water, right? Um, you can do watercolor techniques on a lot of different card stocks, but watercolor paper is meant to have water. And the more water you use, the different the outcome of what you're making. So I am going to take some pretty pastel colors, our new bubble bath, um, Costa Cabana, and then our new lemon lolly. And I'm going to put those in the lid of an empty embellishment container. And you can, of course, you can sprinkle these or you can add droplets right to an acrylic block or any other type of non-porous container surface. You can actually put it right on your ink pads too. And you just wash it off in the sink. So I've got my three colors. You don't need to add much. These go a long way. One other thing I like to have handy is um, some paper towel or some type of toweling, just in case you need to wipe your brush off. I'm using a water spritzer. You get two in a pack of these. I'm also using the largest of our water painters. We have a large, a medium, and a finer tip. So I'm going to take this and get my water started. Um, this is just a refillable barrel. And I like to just kind of do this and make sure I have some water coming out in there. Hang on. There we go. You can see the water coming out. And then before we get started, whoops, I'm going to spritz my watercolor paper with my spritzer. Now, the less water you give is the less blending, or the less water you add to your layer is the less blending you're gonna have of your colors. And so I recommend that you take out a scrap and do a little practicing on that. I'm gonna start with my bubble bath, and I'm just gonna squirt and add a little bit more water to that. And I'm just gonna kinda come in here, and you can see how it bleeds, and it's bleeding because I've added that water. You can see the water pooling up here on my layer. And I'm just gonna kinda go through here. I want this to be, it's gonna be kind of a tie-dye effect. Grab some more. And I just want some real pretty colors on here. Now the other thing you might see here is I have a little dish of water and that just helps me to be able to rinse that um, ink refill out of my brush quicker. I just like to have that handy to do so that 
it doesn't take me so long to get to the point that I'm trying to get to here. Oh my gosh, look at that lemon lolly. Is this so pretty? I love this new color. Now I like to kind of do my lighter colors a little bit more prominently on my layer and it just depends on what kind of look you're gonna get here. And I'm going to now come in with my darker color. I'm gonna kind of dilute that a little bit with my brush and then look at it, look at it bleed. I don't want this to take over my whole project here. So I'm just gonna kind of come in and add it where I think it's gonna, there we go, look at that bleeding. Oh my gosh, this is turning out so pretty. Any white areas along the edge, feel free to add a little bit more color to them or leave them white, it's okay. Water coloring, uh, this type of faux water coloring where we're not usually or not really using watercolor paints um, is is all what you want. There's no right or wrong to this. Okay, I am going to, now you can set these, make a bunch of them, set them aside to dry or you can hit them with your heat tool. You can also take your paper towel and blot up some if you have puddling on the edges to speed up your process. You can blot that up a little bit. I'm just gonna heat this up to dry it. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. What do you guys think? You can really see those cute little stars in here. Oh, I love this. Okay, I'm gonna do one more color combination for you. This one was Bubble Bath, Lemon Lolly, and Coastal Cabana. And then I've got this other layer here that I have already embossed. This one is going to be Berry Burst, Misty Moonlight, and Lemon Lime Twist. Um, Misty Moonlight, well, actually all three of these are returning colors that have come back into the Stampin' Up! Color families. And oh, so excited about that because they are colors that I love. Like I said, you can take this in and rinse it out in your sink, in your bathroom, in your kitchen, whatever, wherever you do that. I'm just going to wipe it out with a baby wipe so that I can add my new colors. So, Lemon Lime Twist, Berry Burst, and Misty Moonlight. Now this is gonna be a much different look as far as color combination, much bolder and brighter, a little less pastel. But I thought I've got a new baby in the family. My husband's nephew just had a baby and I might make a blue card using the same background and send that to him for his new little boy named Louis Alexander. Came in at 11 pounds, 12 ounces, whoa. <laughs> Mama's doing good. Okay, here we go. We're gonna get that nice and wet again. And again, the more water, the more um, bleeding that you're gonna get, which is like my favorite part. Okay, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna grab some of this water. I didn't even change this. I'm gonna start with my lemon lime twist. And I'm just gonna come in here. And if you find once you start doing this that yours isn't bleeding and you really want that look, just spray some more water on it. Watercolor paper is just such a cool medium, and especially when you're doing watercoloring, right? I'm just gonna rinse that out. I don't want my colors to actually mix. And then we're gonna come in and grab some of that blue, get a little bit more water going in there so it's not so intense. Oh, I see that I don't have a lot of water on that corner up there and you can see that because it's not bleeding. This is gonna bleed a little bit more. I wanna leave room for my berry burst. I almost dipped in the wrong color. There would have been a pause in our video. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit more right over here. Now I can see that my paper is pretty dry right here. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna add some more water to that. Maybe just a little bit more up there. We're gonna clean this out. You might wanna change your water. I'm not going to, we'll see what happens. It's coming out okay over here. 
Just gonna push some water down through that water painter. And now we're gonna come in here and grab some berry burst. Oh my goodness, look at that. I just touched it. And again, it did that because there's more water over here. Dilute this a little bit more. Goodness gracious, look how pretty that is. I love it, you guys. Okay, so this is my faux water coloring. And I have to tell you, there are so many different ways to do this. You can do it on blocks. You can do it with markers. You can use watercolor pencils, all kinds of things. Here's our Berry Burst, Misty Moonlight, and Lemon Lime Twist. I'm just going to set this all aside. And we're going to come back in here with a fresh plate and finish this card. So I said that this was three and three quarters by five. I've got a basic black layer that is five and a quarter by three and seven eighths. So just an eighth of an inch larger. And you want to make sure you put glue all the way around the outside edges of your card layer, your watercolor layer, because sometimes it'll um, buckle a little bit on the edges. And if you get that ad adhesive around the outside, you're not going to have any buckling once you mat it. Isn't that, isn't that so, so pretty? I love it. Here comes the rest of our layers. I've got a thick basic white card base that's four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it at five and a half. Get that burnished good. We're gonna bring this layer right in here and add it to our card front. Make sure I get that on there nice and straight. And then I've got a three and three quarters by five inch piece of basic white. This is not watercolor paper. I'm going to show you what else I used for this particular card. So while I do have some fabulous sentiments in here, we're gonna make a birthday card. So we're gonna use to the birthday queen. I wanted a different sentiment to go inside. So I happen to have the brand new beautiful balloons bundle. And I love the, I think it's time for a celebration. I thought that went perfectly with what I was creating here. So I'm going to stamp that in my Memento Black ink. And then I'm going to bring in that Coastal Cabana ink. And I'm going to stamp the cute little phrase from the Friendship Royalty set that says, If the crown fits, I think it's time for a celebration. Isn't that fun? Okay, bubble bath for our little swirl here. A magical swirl. Got that cleaned off and I'm gonna add that right down here. Isn't that pretty? Soft and pretty. We're gonna keep these clean as we go along. And then we've got the little star that's gonna go in the Coastal Cabana and the wand handle. I'm gonna do the wand first. I just found this was easier to get this placed where I wanted it. And then here comes my little star oh, right inside that swirl, perfect. And we can add this right to the inside of our card. But first, I wanna make this pretty spectacular. So I'm gonna add it to a layer of Coastal Cabana that's four by five and a quarter. I hope you guys are not leaving your insides of your cards plain. I thoroughly believe that when you open up a card, the party should not end. No naked insides and no naked envelopes. So let's grab that Coastal Cabana 
And I'm gonna grab one of the crowns from the Friendship Royalty. And I'm gonna put that right on the front of my card. And then we're gonna pull in the If the Crown Fits. And we're gonna do that with, where'd my pink go? Right here, with my bubble bath. I'm gonna put that right down here. So this is our envelope that's going to go with our spectacular faux watercolor card. And now we need something on the front here, right? So this is what I came up with. I'm gonna use my Memento Black Ink and we're gonna stamp that right there. I'm gonna just trim this out. Super easy to cut this little baby out. It's just some straight lines. Just like this, just like this. We are going to take to the birthday queen and we're gonna stamp that with the memento black ink. Whoops, I didn't do that very good. Let's try it again on the other side. There we go. And remember this balloon bundle? Well, it happens to have a star in it that is the same size as the star on my wand. And what I found is it's easier to die cut this and then stamp it. And we can because it's photopolymer rubber that you can see through. So I'm going to die cut that. I've also got a scrap of black here, and I brought in the Something Fancy label dies. I'm gonna take these two right here, which are kind of nesting. The bigger one's gonna go right there. The smaller one, we're going to cut out the sentiment. So hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, here comes all our pieces. Oops tape on there. That turned out great. There's our black layer and our star. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to pop that star out of there. There's some little holes in there. And again, this was from the beautiful balloons die set. Is where the star came from. Now I recommend you cut out a couple of these stars. It'll just make it easier if you don't stamp it perfect the first time you'll have a couple. So I'm going to take my Memento Black ink and I'm going to try to get this really straight on here. Let's see. Oh that's not very good. Don't worry. I've got another one. It's hard for me to stamp when I can't put my head straight over my little image here. Oh, that's better. Okay, that one turned out really good. Let me get my hair out of here. I don't know why hair and stamping always go hand in hand. Now we're ready to assemble. I'm going to add some Wink of Stella to my little star to make it sparkle. Seems like a really good idea, right? We're going to add our label on here. Then I'm gonna bring in my dimensionals. I've got my black dimensionals out here. And I'm going to make sure I've got my card going the right way. I'm gonna put this right up at the top. Oh, that doesn't look very straight. Let me see if I can get it on here straight. And then we're gonna bring our wand in here, add a, just a tiny little bit of glue. You don't need much. Now we're gonna put that right in here like this. I'm gonna put a dimensional on the back of my star. Oops, I got that on there kind of crooked. Let me see if I can get it off without wrecking it. I did it. Yay! <laughs> Put this right on here. There's our little star. I need just a couple more things happening here. And I, whoops, er, 
I thought, get that wiped off. I thought that black baker's twine would go around with my, go, go good with my black elements. So I'm gonna use my um, bow jig and I'm going to make a double bow. Now this is nothing more than a piece of wood with some holes in it and some nails to help you tie bows. If you have trouble tying bows, I can't even recommend this enough to you because it will make your life so much easier. I do sell these. They're $10. It just covers the cost of what I have to pay the guy to make them and my shipping. Only in the U.S., however. But again, just holes with nails. And uh, you can make yourself a bow jig. When you do order one of those, I send you a link to a video I did a while back to show you how to make double bows, single bows, use the bow jig, the whole deal. So, and it's just a, like I said, I don't make any money off of them. It's just a customer service thing that I like to do. Oh, look how cute that is. Ah. And now we need to embellish. So one of the things that I thought would be super cute is to add a little tiny, whoops, hang on, a little tiny rhinestone to my birthday eye, right? Like, oh, yeah. And then I'm going to just sprinkle a bunch of rhinestones around here because a girl's best friend is, you know, diamonds. And I think if you are friendship royalty, you should definitely have some bling going on. So I've done a bunch of those. Maybe one more. I'll grab one more of these. Whoops. There went a there went a rhinestone. It just flew. One more right up there. So here is our super cute friendship royalty to the birthday queen. If the crown fits, I think it's time for celebration. Isn't that cute? Let me bring out the other one. This is the other one that I made out of the brighter colors here. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, so I have had a lot of people ask me about getting an autographed copy of Friendship Royalty. And I do have a registration form that is going to be out this weekend. You're going to find my website at www.astampabove.com. I recently got a new blog. And I just want to let you know that if you find the... Um, blog that has type pad in the URL address. That's not the right one. The new blog is just a stamp above.com. You're going to find a registration link there. It's going to be posted sometime this weekend. I'm going to have a whole kit class on this friendship royalty. And when you order the stamp set, you will get an autographed copy from me. If you would love, I would love to do that for you. Now, don't forget, this is a blog hop. So you're going to want to click up here to go to my blog and um, hop along. You're going to scroll down and find a list of other little thumbnail pictures. And you're going to hop along and see what everybody else did in the Totally Techniques design team with the faux watercoloring technique. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel down here. I am on live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central. And when you subscribe to my channel, it's going to give you a notification that I'm going to be live. So that'll help you remember. Thank you guys so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. I hope you enjoyed my technique. And I hope you will take a look at the Friendship Royalty Kit. I'm only going to have a limited supply of the kits available. And again, they will be posted sometime this weekend. Head over to my blog and you will find them. Have yourselves a great Friday. Bye-bye.